Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off this week with some drone news. Swedish furniture giant IKEA first piloted Verity's automated drone system back in 2020, and according to a recent video by the company, their use is only increasing. There are now over 100 of these automated drones working in IKEA's warehouses, automatically scanning and photographing the product inventory to keep track of everything. These things work day and night, taking shifts while others auto-dock and charge. In similar news, Amazon is trialing a new pharmacy drone delivery service to people in College Station, Texas, expanding from a limited service launched last year. The Megacorp says that those who require medications can now receive them within 60 minutes and eligible customers will begin to see the drone delivery option appear in their checkouts. Britain's Civil Aviation Authority has also given the green light for six new drone delivery trials across the country as part of a study to see how these types of systems can integrate with existing regulations. They will operate in controlled environments under a new temporary reserved area structure which enables drones to operate within the same airspace as other aircraft and the tests involve everything from delivering medical supplies to hospitals to infrastructure maintenance and surveillance. Switching over to manufacturing, and we have a couple interesting developments in small-scale 3D printing technologies. Researchers at Georgia Tech have developed a new process to 3D print glass microstructures, which uses ultraviolet light, drastically reducing heat required to convert the polymer resin to silica glass. Other techniques need heats of over 1,100 degrees Celsius, whereas this one functions at around 220 degrees. It also required much less time to cure, cutting times from half a day down to five hours. They've used it to produce all kinds of glass microstructures, including tiny lenses approximately the width of a human hair that could be used for medical imaging inside the body. A different research project has also developed a new technique for 3D printing nanostructures, dubbed AOSS, this new technique uses something called acousto-optic scanning in place of traditional inertial mechanical scanning, which increases laser scanning speed significantly. After it does this, it uses a spatial optical switch, which allows for light beams with different scanning angles to be activated or deactivated, resulting in speeds up to 10 times faster than alternatives. Other experts say this may eventually pave the way for new micro-optics and micro-mechanical device manufacturing. You know I like to keep you updated with novel 3D printing technologies, and NASA uploaded a video of a unique type of 3D printer that I haven't seen before. Named Isaac, this giant robotic arm has a roller which places layers of composite fibre material onto objects, creating super lightweight and strong parts. They also briefly showed the EBF3, which is a directed energy deposition machine, which uses an electron beam to instantly melt metals and deposit them layer by layer. In other research news, a team from Brewbotics recently uploaded a video demonstrating a bicycle tyre insert prototype which makes them puncture-proof. There's not much information, but they say a polymer can be added to a regular tyre and inner tube, and in their example they showed a nail going through and not affecting the air pressure at all. Cool. There's absolutely tons of automation news this week, and here's yet another automated system, this time from Honda. We briefly saw their autonomous work vehicle for use on construction sites a little while back, but now they're demonstrating how it works on airfields. It has a range of up to 28 miles, works both manually and autonomously, and can carry out tasks such as perimeter fence inspections, mowing green areas, towing baggage carts, and removing debris from runways. Boston Dynamics stretch box unloading robot I showed last year now has a new feature to increase productivity even more. The multi-pick option allows the automated bot to pick up multiple boxes at once with a single swing of its arm. I think this is part of a trend in automation that's often overlooked. Not only do new machines increase speeds and efficiency at which they carry out tasks, but new features like this one provide even more productivity and they can be added to entire fleets with software upgrades. There's more incremental improvements happening in quadruped robotics too. In order to perform important tasks like environmental monitoring or search and rescue, quadruped robots must be able to navigate through branches and vines without getting tied up, and a team at Carnegie Mellon have been researching how to overcome this challenge. They found that having the robot reactively retract its legs was the best option in getting it to navigate and untangle itself from obstacles, compared to other attempts such as high-stepping, which uses a lot more energy in the process. Researchers from the University of Illinois have been experimenting with an interesting idea too. What if you attached an arm to a robo-vacuum to turn it into an inexpensive and useful general-purpose household robot? The team designed a plug-and-play robotic arm system, which attaches to the top of the vacuum, and they demonstrated it navigating specified locations, opening doors, as well as handling and moving objects. Moving over to artificial intelligence now, 
and a couple of weeks ago, Google added some new generative AI feature tests to search results, allowing users to generate images or text directly amongst other items. This feature is currently experimental and is available if you sign up to Google's AI Search Labs program. Another trend we may be seeing more of in the coming years is vertical farming. iFarm recently announced the launch of the first vertical farm in the UAE. Located in Dubai, this farm has a growing area of 712 square meters and will produce three tons of fresh food such as leafy greens, microgreens, herbs and edible flowers per month, initially targeting retail, hotel and restaurant markets. And ending this week with two interesting electronics products. Firstly, the Litchi Console 4A is a portable RISC-V development terminal according to the product page and it basically is like a little netbook that can run Linux. It's based around the TH1520 RISC-V module and has 16 gigs of RAM, 128 gig eMMC plus external SSD capability, a 7 inch 1280 by 800 res screen and a bunch of other standard features. It's available for pre-order now and according to a previous announcement, prices will start at $299. And after shipping to crowdfunding investors earlier this year, Virtuix recently announced that pre-orders for the Omni One virtual reality treadmills are now open to the public. This treadmill has full 360 degree mobility and allows users to walk, run, crouch and jump inside its 4 foot diameter. It's $2600 plus shipping and they estimate it'll ship in the second quarter next year. Alright that's everything for this update. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting edge news or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.